Today we're going to be going through the best settings for the Gigabyte MO27Q28G. You'll find a full review of the screen on our channel that's linked in the description below, but we're going to set the screen up for both SDR and HDR usage, as well as look at all of the gaming settings and OLED care features. You can use these settings from a PC input or equally from a games console or any other device. So let's start by having a look at the OLED care menu, shall we? So the only way to get to the OLED care menu is by using the quick launch option and scrolling left to bring up the OLED care menu. You'll see that there's quite a range of settings here. Most of these are enabled by default and we'll want to leave on as many of them as we can to help with the mitigation of image retention. You can turn things like pixel shift off here if you want. If you find that distracting or annoying during your usage, then there is an option to turn that off. I'll come back to the APL stabilize setting in a moment. The other options should all be on by default. Turn any of those off that you find problematic or distracting, but otherwise just leave them on if you can. Now the APL stabilize setting actually controls the brightness behavior in SDR and in HDR between low, which will give you uniform brightness in SDR, middle, which will give you a slightly boosted brightness, but some ABL dimming, and high, which gives you an even higher boosted brightness, but with more aggressive ABL. We'll set the screen up first of all in SDR, so I think most people will probably want to stick with the low mode. That will give you a uniform brightness in Windows desktop and for applications and avoid any kind of dimming as you move windows around or change content. For SDR gaming and multimedia, you could experiment with using the middle or the high modes. The middle probably gives you a nice boost in brightness but without too much distracting ABL dimming. So by all means try that mode for SDR gaming and SDR multimedia but we'll stick with the low mode for desktop usage. In the main menu then we're going to set the screen up first of all for SDR and the most of the settings that you'll want to change are in the picture menu. We're going to move out of the eco mode which is designed for power saving and there are a few options depending on the color space you want to work with. The custom mode will operate with the full native wide gamma of the panel so that will give you the most vivid and saturated image. Some people might prefer that kind of image for SDR gaming, multimedia, that kind of thing. You may even like it for Windows desktop and general usage. So first of all we'll set the screen up in this native gamut mode. Brightness we're going to turn down to a setting of 29 to give you a 120 nits luminance. You can set that higher at 37 for 150 nits or 53 for 200 nits but really you can set this at whatever you feel is comfortable for your ambient lighting conditions and your user preferences. We're just going to use 29 to give us 120 nits luminance. Contrast can stay on 50. The other settings here can stay as they are on default. Gamma can stay on 2.2. Color temperature, we're actually going to move out of the normal mode and onto the user define mode. And we're going to configure these slightly to 100 for red, 99 for green, 99 for blue. That should give you a slightly better white point that's closer to D65. The color space menu defaults to the native full wide gamma of the screen initially. You can also trigger the Adobe RGB or display P3 modes here if you want to work with Adobe RGB content potentially for photo applications and professional uses, display P3 potentially if you're working with HDR content. You'll see that if you select those modes, a lot of the settings are now actually grayed out in the menu. Contrast and all of these color and gamma settings, you can still adjust brightness and the same levels apply, but this would basically just clamp the color space back closer to DCI P3 or Adobe RGB if you want to work specifically in either of those modes. We'll leave that on native for now. The other option that you might want to explore for SDR is to use the sRGB preset. So rather than having a separate color space setting, this actually has its own preset you can see here, sRGB. Now if we switch to that, you'll see brightness is still available. So we can set these at the same levels as we did before. 29 for 120 nits, 37 for 150 or 53 for 200 nits. A lot of the other settings are still greyed out as you can see. There's not really much to change there but importantly this will clamp the native colour space back to the sRGB reference. So that will give you more accurate SDR performance, less vivid, less saturated colours. So you've got a choice there, you can either use sRGB or custom for full gamma or, or indeed one of the other colour space options. If you decide to use the custom mode that we've set up there with the colour temp adjustments and using the native gamma, then you may also want to check out our calibrated ICC profile that's linked in the description below. That will clamp the colour space back to sRGB for colour aware applications. So you can use the full native gamma where it's necessary and sRGB where it's needed in other applications. Check that out, that's linked in the description below. We'll have a look at the gaming settings as well. So there's a couple of things you may want to tweak here. 
The black equalizer mode improves the near black shadow detail. Now it's already very good on this screen, but you may want to experiment with bumping this up a couple of notches to improve that kind of near black, very dark gray detail. We found that anything up to a setting of 12 raises those dark gray shades without increasing or raising the black depth. So that would be your maximum. If you go above that to 13 or above, then it starts to make black look progressively more gray. So you don't want raised blacks. Stick with 12 as a maximum, but you may want to adjust that for darker gaming and that kind of thing. Low input lag should be left on. That will give you the best input lag, obviously. And VRR, you can turn on or off there. If you've got it turned on, you can also enable the anti-flicker modes. Now they do help with flicker a little bit by reducing the VRR range. Check out our full review for details on how much, but you can experiment with those settings if you find there's any problem with VRR flicker during your particular usage. In the system and the other settings menu, there's a couple of things you might want to have a look at here. You can turn on smart power delivery here if you want. You can turn on or leave on or turn off the USB A and C charge. And HDMI C, so you may want to turn on. That will enable the feature that means that when an HDMI source is powered on, the screen will auto switch over to that. So that's useful for like a console or something that's connected via HDMI. We'll also set the screen up in HDR mode now as well. So we've enabled HDR from Windows and the screen has automatically switched into its HDR mode. You can see that indicated here. As a reminder, we'd only recommend enabling Windows HDR when you're actually going to view HDR content. Otherwise it can lead to all kinds of problems and issues. We explain that in detail in our other video that's linked below. So check that out if you want to know a lot more. In HDR mode, some of the settings are not available anymore, but the ones you want to change are in the picture menu. So all of these preset modes here are basically different pre-configurations of all of the individual settings that you can see here. In some of the modes, you can't actually change those, like in this HDR mode, they're all locked. But in some of the others, like HDR gaming, you can see that you've now got access to all of these. Now you can make any mode look like any other mode by tweaking these if you want, but they've all got slightly different default configurations. The main setting that has an impact is actually in the OLED care menu. You'll see here that the APL stabilize is set between high or middle, depending on the HDR mode that you're going to use. If I go back to the HDR menu, game mode and vivid mode and peak 1500 mode operate with APL stabilize high. So that will give you the highest luminance possible. Whereas the movie mode and the HDR mode operate with APL set to middle. Now that will cap brightness to a lower level, but will give you slightly better EOTF tracking. Now we think most people will want to use a mode that has APL stabilized set to high. That will give you the highest peak luminance and actually it ends up looking equally as bright in all other scenes anyway. So we're gonna use the HDR game mode. We found this to be the best default balance. Leave brightness on 100, that will give you the maximum brightness capability. Contrast, in this mode it defaults to 52. You could turn that back down to 50 potentially. There's very little visual difference anyway. We're just gonna leave that on 52. That's the default for that mode. If you want to tweak things slightly, you could move it back down to 50. Light enhance, we would recommend leaving turned off. It does make the screen brighter, but it drastically impacts detail and you lose a load of detail in brighter scenes and even in darker scenes as well. So leave light enhance off is our recommendation. Color enhance is on zero by default. You can bump that up a little bit. That would just make the image a little bit more vivid, a little bit more colorful. Treat it a little bit like you would a setting like digital vibrance, but maybe turning it up to level one will give you a slightly boosted color, but for best accuracy and an already very wide color gamut, we just leave that on zero. Dark Enhance, that's enabled by default in the HDR game mode. It makes very little difference really, but we'll leave that turned on. It does slightly help with near black detail. So it's best just to leave that on. So that's it really. You've got the HDR game mode, we've left APL stabilize on high, and then we've configured those other settings as indicated there. And that's the screen setup for both SDR and HDR usage. If you found that video useful, please give us a quick like below. You can find a link to our calibrated ICC profile, the full review of the screen, and loads of other useful content as well in the description. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.